His Excellency Dr. Pit Puan, Permanent Secretary of State, Minister of Labour and Vocational Training, and Minister Delegate attached to the Prime Minister Department. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is John Cha, Executive Mem Committee Member, Government Manufacturers Association in Cambodia, GMAN. On behalf of our association, which is co-organizing this web webinar with NEA, National Employment Agency of the Ministry of Labour and Vocational Training, I have great honour to welcome you to this annual conference titled Maintaining Productivity During COVID-19 Pandemic. Since the year 2017, this annual conference has been organized in conjunction with National Career Fair. It is itself an event which has become a very popular platform for people, especially youths, to meet and explore employment and career opportunities with potential employers. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, maintaining and improving productivity is a huge challenge for most organizations. It is more so in the current COVID-19 crisis. The destructions that the pandemic has caused to the world has been well documented. There is no country that can escape the damages and sufferings that it has caused. The disruptions to human activities can be social, personal, family, work or livelihood have forced people to make changes to their lives some to the very extreme level. From the perspectives of works and businesses, initial reactions to COVID-19 pandemic were very much dri driven by governments of their respective countries. In the absence of clear direction, some organizations temporarily shuttered their businesses in response to government restrictions, while others did so simply due to falling demand or disruptions in supply. Those who used, work, used to work in office were told to work from home, or WFH, as what is popularly referred to now. Working from off-site brings along unique challenges. Some studies found WFH improves productivity, while others surveys concluded otherwise. But one fact is indisputable. The advances of internet technology and digital transformation have made work from home easier and much more efficient than just a few years before. Zoom technology and the likes of it have now been used in almost all sectors of work, including in the education sector, which is among the worst hit by the pandemic. In an early 2021 McKinsey and Company worldwide survey, more than 50% of employees said they would like to work from home for three days or more per week. However, majority of the workforce cannot work remotely without suffering loss in productivity. One of the most profound effects of the pandemic on marketing and retail sales stores is the vacuuming out of shopping malls and physical retail outlets. Most retail sales companies have shifted their go-to-market strategy to do online selling. In fact, online sales of most essential daily needs items experienced big rise in online sales. It has been reported that there was between 15 to 30% growth in the number of consumers purchase online for most retail categories during the pandemic for major world markets. Indeed, COVID-19 served as a great accelerant, advancing 10 years of e-commerce growth in just 90 days, a massive change in consumer behavior never witnessed in history. Unlike their office counterparts, Frontline manufacturing employees can't take their work to the relative safety of their homes. Factory management have to look for ways to operate 
through the crisis. In Cambodia, prior to February 20th, 2021, factories were relatively unaffected by COVID-19 pandemic. A sudden outbreak starting on February 20th, now commonly referred to as February 20th incident, has resulted in the pandemic spinning into a period of chaos and lockdowns and factories closures. Looking back, the quick and resolute decisions and countermeasures by the Royal Government of Cambodia over the last several months have indeed brought the crisis into current, more stable situation. Moving forward, it is critical that the employees in the workplace are protected from COVID-19 infection. The focus is to keep employees safe in an environment where repeated outbreaks are a persistent threat. There are three areas of focus factory management needs to navigate in the transition from initial response to the so-called next normal when the pandemic subsided to become endemic. They are one, protect the workforce, two, manage risk to ensure business continuity, and three, drive productivity at a distance. To protect the workforce, policies and formalized SOPs are implemented to guide enhanced hygiene and other safety measures, such as provision of additional personal protective equipment, PPE, physical workplace and social distancing, modifications to existing shop floor practices and behavior, staggering working hours and lunch breaks to prevent overcrowding, emergency response guidelines, enhanced health surveillance, restrictions on use of communal tools and areas, regular sanitation of equipment, and periodic deep cleaning of workplace. We are indeed fortunate that the Cambodian Ministry of Labor and Vocational Training, as well as Ministry of Health, have acted promptly to provide very comprehensive sets of guidelines and measures to undertake in this respect. There is also additional advisory on testing requirements and what to do when new cases of COVID-19 are found among employees. In this regard, GMAN, Government Manufacturers Association in Cambodia, working together with TIDA, TYDA, SOMDEC, TECHO, Voluntary Youth Doctor Organization, uh, Association, has contributed by sponsoring a 300-bed COVID-19 quarantine and treatment center. During pandemic, there's a need for factory management to strengthen internal communication and sharing of information on new guidelines and SOP requirements, as well as updating of status and changes which are quite frequent. This includes policy on quarantine requirement of workers if tested positive and in close contact and their entitlement for salary, allowances, and sick leave. Workers also need to be educated on the requirements for PCR testing, contact tracing, and the risk of infecting others. There's also a need to care for mental health of employees, especially for those who may need counseling upon return from quarantine and hospitalization. Good two-way communication, increased frequency and clarity will also help reduce absenteeism. Perhaps the first problems faced by factories upon returning and reopening after pandemic stabilized was a big rise in absenteeism. Migrant workers decided to return to their prospective homes for reason of perceived safety. Others did so upon urging by loved ones. There is also reason of finance when uncertainty in factory production affected their incomes. The problem of high absenteeism is still affecting many factories today. 
a quick survey taken as recent as the end of September among some GMAP members found many garment factories still face low attendance. High absenteeism rate has affected productivity greatly. To navigate the negative effects, factory management make daily adjustments to their planning and line crewing. Constant upskilling, reskilling, and cross-training to improve the skills metrics will help make daily adjustments easier. Some line supervisors proactively reach out to their workers before work be begins in the morning. Advanced notice of absenteeism and clear production priorities will help production crewing. The challenge now is to convince the workers to return to work. COVID-19 increased dramatically risk of business, notably the risk brought about by disruption in supply chain worldwide and to Cambodia as well. The initial stage of outbreak has caused major disruptions in supplies of materials to our factories, making it difficult to fulfill customers' orders. To date, supply chain problems in logistics have not gone away completely. There are still reports of container shortages and shipping delays. Some logistic operators exploit the situation by demanding high charges. For medium term, a combination of technology and factory best practices offers insight on ensuring safety and managing COVID-19 infection risk without sacrificing productivity in the factories. Managing performance need no longer to be a face-to-face -face routine. If not required to be at the shop floor, management are encouraged to work remotely, thus allowing less gamba or shop floor walks. Production and quality data can be captured, collected and reported paperless. Access data information can be done without personal devices to handle activities such as shift handovers, meetings, and to track, report, and review performance KPIs, as well as troubleshooting for problem solving. Other areas of work that can be remotely monitored are mundane activities such as cleaning, checking, and adjusting of equipment. Similar, similarly, external equipment service contractors can carry out their tasks remotely and need not be at site unless really necessary. It is not, not worthy, uh, worth noting that MOLVT inspection services and BFC, Better Factory Cambodia, monitoring scheme can now be carried out remotely online. Post COVID-19, operating under the next normal, factories needs to be digitized and digitalized. Starting with production planning and data capturing, reporting, analysis, and problem solving, and KPI reporting both at line and at management levels. Digitization will also be extended to product development, pattern making, and other pre-production activities. For some years now, majority of brands and buyers are already insisting on their factories to embark on this inevitable direction. Coupled with smart machines, investment in productive management software systems such as ERP, MRP, and the likes of browseware, this digital transform transformation will surely be expedited. The next normal, we also see an acceleration of adoption of management systems that emphasize on productivity and quality to expand to include focus on flexibility and resilience, including the ability to navigate challenges in supply chain and in sustainability. Flexibility requires that there will be acceleration on the adoption of digital technologies, as well as cross-training, reskilling, upskilling, and multi-skilling of workforce to be digital technology enabled. 
In this connection, we are happy to note that in the new investment law, the government of Cambodia has provided attractive financial incentives for, for companies to invest in human resource development, R&D, innovation, and mon modernization of machineries and technologies. These new provisions will certainly help Cambodia economy to recover in the near term and to make the country more competitive in the longer term. In closing, allow me to sincerely thank His Excellency Dr. Pixop Kwan for his strong support and for kindly consenting to open this webinar event. I would also like to thank all our expert speakers whose contribution will surely be valuable to our participants. Thank you very much and I wish you all a productive and useful day.